Uh, does it make it a bit more obvious now? Yeah, uh, you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so that's a um, a, uh, a blood spot there as well. Okay, uh, and again, indicative of uh, background diabetic retinopathy. Yeah, and is it just just those small signs that you look for? That yeah, right. So uh, let's start from here then. So the the OCT gives us a section into the retina, and then the fundus image, which is a what we call an on fast image, uh, gives us the surface picture of the retina. So when someone goes for diabetic eye screening, it is the image, the surface image that is being taken to grade the diabetic retinopathy and screen for diabetic retinopathy. So if we make that bigger, what we're looking at is the optic nerve head, where all the nerves collect before going to the brain. And then from here, you get your blood vessels that supply the surface or what we call the inner part of the retina. Uh, and then the, the, the redness in the background makes up the, the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the, uh, the, the deeper parts of the retina, or what we call the outer retina. This area here, where you see the, the darker spot, is called the macular area, and right in the middle of that, you have the fovea. So when it comes to uh, looking for uh, signs of uh, background diabetic retinopathy, we're looking for any leaking of blood vessels in the retina. And so if I put it on the red free, yeah, then it makes it a bit easier to see the uh, the blood vessel or any blood uh, relative to the rest of the colors. And you can see some blood spots yeah, in the background okay. there, which would indicate background diabetic retinopathy. Okay. okay? Um, then if we jump back to the section over here, we then are able to look at some extra data. This data over here is letting us know what the structure of the macular area is. So this dip over here is called the foveal dip. Yeah, and that's looking normal. And what this is measuring is the thickness of the macula area in different areas around the macula and comparing it to um, a, a what we call a normative database. So yeah. population of normals, yeah, uh, to let us know that it's within normal limits. Okay, so it's like an indicator. So if we now compare that to the other eye, let's so go to the left eye now. Uh, and we can then jump to this again. Let's get rid of that. We did that for now. And then, um, can you see anything on there that you would think would indicate a little blood spot on your retina? That's what I'll ask you. <laughs> yeah. um, so if I do that, uh, does it make it a bit more obvious now? Yeah, uh, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see that. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so that's a, um, a, uh, uh, blood spot there as well. Okay, uh, and again, indicative of uh, background diabetic retinopathy. Yeah, and is it just just those small signs that you look for? That yeah, for background, the for very that, yeah. the, the signs can be very subtle. I have been living with type one diabetes since two thousand one. I recently received a letter following on from my scan to say that I have background diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is a diabetes complication that affects the eyes and it's caused by damage to the blood vessels of the light sensitive tissue at the back of the eye, which is called the retina. Initially, diabetic retinopathy may cause no symptoms at all or mild vision problems. However, it can lead to blindness. The condition can develop in anyone who has type one or type two diabetes, and the longer you have diabetes and the less well controlled your blood glucose is, the more likely you are to develop this condition. Bearing in mind, I've lived with diabetes since 2001, and this is the reason why I have diabetic retinopathy. Over the next six months, I will be using the Noctura 400 mask as part of my diabetic retinopathy management plan. The Noctura 400 is an innovative approach to managing background diabetic retinopathy, and it is a non-invasive therapy that involves wearing a specialized sleep mask. The mask emits a gentle green light while you sleep, which is designed to reduce the oxygen demand of the retina overnight. This reduction in oxygen demand can help to prevent or slow down the progression of diabetic retinopathy. The light therapy works by simulating the natural effects of daylight, which reduces the retina's production of a substance known as vascular endothelial growth factor, known to promote the growth of new blood vessels in advanced stages of diabetic retinopathy. I met with Salman Siddiqui, a principal optometrist and hospital optometrist, and also the founder of IQ Optometry, to discuss background diabetic retinopathy and to take a look at my scans and have my scans explained to me for the first time 
since my diagnosis. And here he will explain how diabetic retinopathy works and how the Noctura 400 mask works. So uh, uh, diabetes is, uh, um, is a, uh, a disease that affects the uh, blood vessels around the body, affecting the large bl blood vessels, but also the, uh, the smaller uh, blood vessels, the capillary networks uh, in different parts of the body, specifically in the eye, it causes diabetic retinopathy, where the, uh, uh, the blood starts to leak into the uh, retina. Um, and as this uh, damage continues, uh, it creates an environment where uh, the oxygen supply to the retinal uh, cells is then compromised. Uh, this compromise in uh, oxygen delivery causes a state of uh, hypoxia and the retina responds to this state of hypoxia by trying to introduce more oxygen into the retina. And it does that by growing new blood vessels. Unfortunately, these new blood vessels that grow are not as good as the original blood vessels and they tend to be leaky and grow um, in odd directions. This then causes further problems and continues the, the, the stages of diabetic retinopathy, proliferative diabetic retinopathy and the uh, damage to the retina that uh, follows from that. So the aim of uh, Noctura 400 is to, to to change that state of hypoxia or the low oxygen environment by putting the rod cells, which are responsible for our night vision, uh, in a more restful state. And it does this by shining a, a wavelength of light, which keeps them less active because the rod cells are responsible for our night vision, which means that they are at their most active in, in the night or in low light when they are trying to catch as, as many photons of light as possible to allow us to see in the night. These rod cells continue to work whether we're awake or asleep. So whether we're in a dark room or whether we're fast asleep or with our eyes closed, they're still working away. And so when utilizing the Noctura 400, these rod cells, you're, you're almost like making them believe that they are in a light environment. And because of that, they don't need to work as hard. And because they don't need to work as hard, they don't use as much oxygen. And hence, overall, in an average 24-hour period, the oxygen demand in the retina is a lot lower. And because of this lower oxygen demand, there's more oxygen to go around. And hence, uh, the processes that follow in direct retinopathy are able to slow down. Uh, and this is um, shown to cause uh, a change in the uh, diabetic retinopathy stage or I reverse it, diabetic maculopathy and diabetic uh, for those who are using Noctura 400. It's shown to be around 66% effective um, in uh, uh, in the studies uh, that uh, polyphotonics has, uh, has done.